So this is the, um, I believe it's the fourth um, response to uh, <coughs> our Australian friend. And uh, it took me a while um, to kind of filter through uh, of what he was asking because he was kind of, uh, he kind of jumped to a few different places all over the place. Um, I never identify myself as an ex-Muslim. I never identify myself as an ex-Satanist. I never identify myself as an ex-atheist. Why would I fast and do the Trisayan prayers? Um, because it's perfectly natural and it's a part of humanity. And this is why I started. I didn't, I didn't, come back doing the Trisayan prayers and fasting for any belief in a god. I did it because it's part of my nature. That's something that I learned from uh, Levain Satanism. Um, to go without such rituals is to, defy, is to defy tens of thousands and now we're learning hundreds of thousands of years of um, of humanity, which evolution and psychology play a big role in that. And that's why I started back up. <coughs> of uh, and if you if you look at my old channel of uh, from atheism to orthodoxy, uh, I never talk about leaving atheism. In fact, I don't believe that atheism is the rejection of the Orthodox God. I just believe it's the rejection of the Western God. Um, because the Eastern God is more like the Tao. Um, which might be confusing to somebody who's only been exposed to Catholicism or Protestantism and to say, well, how, you know, and with their reading of the Bible. Um, thinking back now, I think I suggested the Church Fathers to you uh, because I thought you were a... Uh, uh, a Protestant because you had this um, this video on uh, the different verses of the Bible in which are different um, you seem to be a Bible collector and um, different uh, you seem to have an immense interest in um, in reading the Bible in different editions and what is the closest to, uh, what, what translation is closer to the, um, the actual translation. Um, and I love your honesty, um, because I, I remember pointing out to you that he, you were saying that the, the, um, New World Translation was closer to, um, the, uh, the actual TR text, Textus or Septus, and I said, well, no, there's actually no translators. They couldn't read Greek, and they relied on Johannes Grieber a lot, who was a spiritualist. So, um, <coughs> from that, I mean, you can easily see that somebody just watching that video would see that you were a Protestant, since you're studying the Bible and you have multiple Bibles. Um, it's not a, uh, it's not a jump to, um, it's not as if I say, well, um, don't read the Bible, read the, um, read the church fathers, um, as authoritative or read the, read the early, early Christian fathers or the Catholic fathers, whatever you want to call them. Um, 
doing my best not to try to push orthodoxy on you, because as you know, um, proselytization is against what we believe. Um, it is wildly unnatural for a human not to have dogma and ritual. I believe uh, the founder of Satanism, Anton LaVey, clearly points this out, that uh, modern man is basically insane for rejecting um, ritual and dogma. Uh, so it, it began in practice. Uh, <clears throat> rather than, uh, well, in orthodoxy there is a connection between, um, between practice and, um, and, uh, interaction with God. It's, it's experiential. It's 100% experiential. That's why if somebody's an atheist, I, I will not, um, ever try to talk them into God. I, I don't find... God to be um, rational in the way of well we can we can sit down and talk this out and hash this out and I can show you how rational God is that's totally opposed to orthodoxy and um, is rejected and uh, what we might call evangelism would be helping the poor um, helping the needy counseling the uh, the lost, and what I mean, counseling lost, and what I mean, proselytizing. I mean, those people who are uh, depressed or beaten down by the world, or physically battered, or um, uh, just if you've ever seen somebody who's just lost, whether you know PTSD or um, just in a in a horrible, desperate desperate state and uh, I believe a lot of the times bringing in the name of Christ or Jesus is actually very abusive so I'm, I'm going to try to uh, answer your question um, in a different way I know I made three videos but I, I after watching your video again I, I thought no those are unsatisfactory and I I, I don't think those are actually the uh, questions that you were asking um heaven or the existing one um, is experiential and the reason why I said well check out the church fathers and their uh, their relationship to, to what the scripture had meant is because um, you seem it seemed that you portrayed yourself as a Protestant I mean looking over uh, the texts trying to find out oh well, what's the best um, what's the closest to, um, what's the closest translation to, uh, what the text actually means? Uh, for me, I like the NASB, um, but I applaud you in that because, as you know, the Bible is part of your culture. Uh, it's a, uh, part of the world culture, especially, uh, Western civilization and especially, um, English-speaking Anglo-Saxon culture, even though, <laughs> um, yes, I, I am Latino and I am Arab, but I'm also half Irish Catholic, so you'd think I'd have a natural aversion to the King James, um, but I recognize it as part of our uh, English, or as part of our culture. This is a staple of, uh, of English literature. Um, and I'm beginning to understand that that's that's how you view it. I mean, this is this is like um, reading the Epic of Gilgamesh or the Pharaohs or the ancient Greeks for you. I at least that's what I assume or what I uh, get from you, since you're an atheist, but yet you're uh, you have multiple copies of the Bible and you're reading it um, a way to connect your cultural roots, uh, which I think is a very positive thing. Um, so for me, rationality, um, I've made plenty of videos saying that that's, that's stupid and I want nothing to do with it. Uh, it's only experiential and that I, I don't pursue atheists. 
I'm not trying to proselytize them. Um, and I think uh, you misunderstood at the end when you said, oh, well, you believe the, high, the church fathers are higher than the... Um, than the, than the gospel, um, or not the gospel, the New Testament. Um, the issues that I did take with, take ish, the, some things I did take issue with you in um, the previous videos when you said Bart Ehrman, uh, when you say Bart Ehrman, um, uh, you know, and the scholars that basically prove that none of the writers of the New Testament um, wrote the New Testament. No, no serious scholar will ever say that. They will always say, uh, well, unanimously, that Paul wrote Romans, Galatians, Corinthians. Uh, and keep in mind that Alexander the Great, um, nothing was written down about him until 200 years after he died. And all of the stories contain um, shields coming down from heaven and destroying armies, miraculous events all these other things so we can uh, we can separate the exaggerations from the uh, the historical person and it's very it's actually very easy to do with um, Jesus of Nazareth since there were so many so many things going on at the time I mean the idea that uh, the Gospels were written down 40 to 60 years after Christ's death I mean that's it's kind of silly to say, well, because they were re religious texts written by, or not religious, that, that they were texts written by the Christians, biographies written by the Christians, that they don't count. As if um, Caesar's commentary, since they were written and preserved by the Romans, that they have no value. And let's not fool ourselves, the... Um, earliest copy of Caesar's commentaries we have is from the 14th century. Um, Alexander the Great, it's very late too. I mean, some of the earliest manuscripts that we have are of the New Testament. And we also have people like Pliny, Celsus, um, Tacitus, who were not pro-Christian whatsoever, and who, to some extent, misunderstood the Christians, because when Pliny argued, well, these people are atheists, since the gods aren't real, um, they're not really committing a crime, uh, <coughs> to say that um, the authors of the New, or all of the authors of the New Testament uh, cannot be accounted for, um, is a gross misunderstanding of history, um, as for rational evidence, um, no, it's it's experiential. Um, I, I don't know how many times I have to say that, but um, uh, I can learn all I want about you know a certain human being, but if I don't actually go and talk to them, or I can learn as much as I want about sex, and you know, you know, study it in books. Once I have sex with somebody, I you you lack the knowledge, um, and I hope this clears up some things for you. Uh, but yeah, I I mean, Again, I have to challenge you to go back to Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman clearly says that there is no serious historian, and he knows thousands of them, that would doubt that Paul wrote Galatians, Romans, or Corinthians. And that if you look at the, uh, of when not only the Gospels were written, but even um, the things that were written by the, uh, the enemies of the Christians, and uh, even just the persecutions that happened, that it was Jesus Christ as a historical figure. Now, that doesn't speak to his miracles, but we can't just say, well, he's not a historical figure, because then we'd have to throw out, you know, William the Conqueror, Charlemagne, all those other people. 
Uh, peace to you. May God save Serbia. And uh, I would love to hear you getting back to me on this one. Uh, maybe we can Skype someday. Um, please uh, message me in a PM. Uh, I know this is the fourth video now, but I I felt the need to... Uh, I, each time I watched your uh, videos, I found out things that I had missed to say. So, peace to you. Good night.